So when you walk around the countryside and you see flowers, there's a very good chance you're going to see bees and other insects on them. What you're looking at here is a solitary native bee getting pollen and nectar from a sunflower. Here's another native bee known as the bumblebee. Look how big she is. She's also collecting nectar and getting pollen to lay her eggs and develop her own young through the growing year. Now, there is a social bee that is non-native that we've brought to the United States that we use to get resources such as honey and beeswax. That would be this little forager known as the honeybee. Just got visited by that bumblebee at the bottom there. They have fur all over their bodies, which helps them collect pollen from the flowers they visit. As they fly through the air, the hairs on their body develop static. And when they land on these flowers, in this case sunflowers, this native pollinator is moving that pollen off of her hair to her hind legs and has what we call pollen pants. See the bee rubbing all of that bright yellow pollen that she's going to use to develop her young as well. Back to this bumblebee, there are over 20,000 species of bees in the world. Here's another native pollinator. She's a solitary bee, but some bees are social, and social bees have the ability to develop a perennial nest of comb that allows them to exist for years and even through winter, and that would be this little honeybee. Honeybees are managed by people for the most part, although they can be found in tree hollows. This particular one lives in a hive. Hives are kept by beekeepers. She's known as Apis mellifera. So this is the domestic or managed honeybee. She has pollen on her hind legs to feed her brood and develop her baby replacement bees. And she also has a honey crop full of nectar that she's going to bring back. And that provides the energy the bees need in that hive in order to raise their young. Everyone needs a break once a while. And this bumblebee is taking a break on the sunflower leaf. Often you find them early in the morning, just like this, resting up for the day. Now this is a honeybee that is collecting just pollen. Sometimes when you stop and take a close look, you'll see the pollen flipping into the air there, collecting on her body hairs, and then she will groom it back as she is here to her hind legs so that she can carry them back to the hive. And again, this bee will enter the hive, communicate to the other bees through a waggle dance where she found this valuable pollen resource so that others can go out and get some too. It's another female foraging honeybee who's at the edge of a pond. This bee collects water for the hive. The water is stored in her honey crop. This is an older bee and she does not visit flowers. She only collects water. Water has many purposes in the hive. She can go in and spread it across the brood frames and then they evaporate it off by fanning their wings and cooling the hive when it's necessary. She can also bring it in, extend her tongue as she is here, and let other bees share in the water that they need if they've not left the hive yet. So this is one of the last jobs in a bee's life that they have. And they like places like this pond with the algae there because there are a lot of other minerals in this water which they all need. Also, while this bee is collecting water, it gives us a chance to look closely at the hairs all over her body. Bees have compound eyes and three acilla. The eyes that are in between these two large compound eyes, so bees actually have five eyes. Now they forage for miles and they have to find their way back home. And these bees are coming and going from an apiary, which is what's known as a bee yard. They have to return to the hive that they departed from and they memorize their locations. They note landmarks like the trees next to the hive that they live in, what direction the landing board faces, the color of the hive, the configuration like these hive visors that are on the front. Even colors are noticed by the bees as they come and go. 
Now we're seeing these bees at a very slow speed so that you can really get a look at how they fly and how they come and go through the lower entrance of this beehive. Inside this hive, they live in total darkness. We're gonna take a look inside to see how they've arranged their comb and what happens in there. There are three casts of bees living here. One is the queen. All the workers that we see here have come from a single queen, although on rare occasions, there could be two queens laying eggs for the same hive. The male bees are known as drones. They have large eyes on their head that come together at the top, which helps them see virgin queens. Their whole job is to mate. Now we see this full speed so you can appreciate the pace of the work that's going on in a beehive. Coming and going during daylight hours. At night, they don't fly. They simply can't see well enough. Now we're inside the hive and we're looking at the upper portion, which is where they've stored their honey. It's capped with beeswax. That's why it looks white. There are hexagonal cells and the foraging bees bring back the nectar from the field and pass it on to another bee who then places the nectar inside the cells. The bees will fan their wings and dehydrate it down until it is well below 19% water. They've also amended the nectar with their own mandibular material and their antibacterial properties that keep the honey from spoiling. Honey has a unique flavor based on the flowers that it was derived from. So foraging bees really do choose what the honey is going to be composed of. Here we have a quick look at the queen. She's moving across brood frames and this queen will lay up to her body weight in eggs every single day usually over a thousand eggs a day. Those eggs hatch in three days and become larva. And after their larva state, they get capped, they become pupa, and an adult bee hatches 21 days after the egg is laid. Which means during the productive times of the year, there are more than a thousand new bees hatching out every single day. This is a close look at the larvae. Remember after the third day an egg hatches and it gets fed by the nurse bees. They all start out on a mix of royal jelly and the worker bees then get something known as bee bread, which is developed from the pollen that they've stored and fermented. Some of these bees are not working very hard right now. Remember that they do take breaks from time to time. And here's a look at the brood comb. This is the nursery inside the hive. Look at the thousands of capped cells ready to hatch out. Then we look through the comb. Some of the cells are empty and can be used for honey storage. It can also be used for pollen storage. The bees that collect pollen put it right in the cells. Remember on the 21st day, a worker hatches and here we have one. This brand new bee is coming out. She has chewed her wax cover off by herself. She'll groom herself and go right to work among the nurse bees on the brood frames, keeping things clean and later feeding other larvae. One of the benefits of the honeybee is the fact that they have a tendency to hoard honey. They produce far more than they need to get them through winter. And this lets beekeepers harvest honey. We can also harvest comb and wax. So this shows the bees on the entrance fanning out the air, keeping things moving so that the honey gets properly dehydrated down. Remember, it has to be under 19% or it could ferment and spoil. This is fantastic looking honey. This comes from asters and other floral sources like clover and now goldenrod. Here's a slow motion sequence again of the worker foraging honeybee she may only live five weeks this time of year, which is in August, and she's collecting the pollen again on her hind legs in specially shaped pollen baskets. So she's busy getting nectar. It takes 12 worker honeybees their entire lifetime to produce a single teaspoon of honey. So I hope you appreciate that providing flowers and natural resources in the environment and diversity will provide not just for honeybees, but for countless native bees and other pollinators. So whenever we plant flowers or preserve 
natural flowers in the environment were helping pollinators everywhere. As critical plant pollinators, bees pollinate 80% of the world's plants, including 90 different food crops. So I hope you've enjoyed this and this should get a greater appreciation when you look at honeybees and understand all the work they do to prepare for winter and to provide honey and wax for people.